Hey there, and welcome to our channel, where every day is an adventure waiting to be shared. I'm Manda, and together with Dan and Aria, we explore, capture, and most importantly, enjoy every moment together. Join us on this incredible journey around the globe. In this week's episode, we take a drive to Lauterbrunnen, Grindelwald, and Interlaken. We have an adventurous day visiting the Valley of Waterfalls, the world's only accessible glacial waterfall, partake in alpine tobogganing and ziplining, and admire one of the many stunning blue glacial lakes. Let the journey begin. We've taken a day trip from where we're staying, which is about a two hour drive uh, to Lauterbrunnen and Grindelwald and all of that area today. So we're doing a massive day. We've been up at six, in the car at 7.30 and we're here at 9.30. And I don't think we're going to get home until probably eight o'clock tonight, but we'll see how we go. We're going to show you as much as we can and get jam packed as much as we can into the day and show you this stunning area in Switzerland. Ben and I have actually been here before to this area a long, long time ago but also in winter, so it looks very different for us here this time. Our first stop is the Trimbleback Waterfall, <laughs> um, which is about, I think, 14 or 16 francs per adult, and then six francs per child under, well, uh, six is free. Um, it's our first stop. About an hour, apparently. <laughs> but, uh, I don't mind when you're in this view, look at this.
my gosh, this is epic. So this is the only glacier, gla glacier waterfall um, that is in a mountain that's accessible in Europe. It's pretty fa fantastic, actually. Um, yeah, so anyway, so we did number one and two after going the gate, caught the elevator up, and did numbers six to ten, up to number five, and now working our way down the stairs to do numbers um, four and three. I think it is. Uh, they're all different lookout points. So the research I did about this said that you're best to make your way all the way to the top and work your way down. And I think that's a good piece of advice as well. So thanks to, I can't remember what blog I was reading that did that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely stunning and so worth the, the um, price for the entry because it's one of those moments that you don't get every day. Going to Bulganing um, in Grindelwald now. Something fun and adventurous. Should be fun. I'm going first. What do you think, Amanda? That's good. What do you think, Aria? Good. Good fun?
Where are we? Are we? Is this flooding where? Cut it down beside you. On but the mountain. In Switzerland. In Switzerland. Are you the luckiest kid in the world? Yeah. Hold up. Now do what you do. Get loud. Go ahead, get loose. Get down to business. Tell everyone. Nothing's on limits. You can have everything you want. Woo! Is that fun? Yeah. Tell me about it. Quick. It was, this is so fun. <laughs> Bye. Just done up here at Finsteg Grindelwald, if that's how you say it. Um, it was $66 per adult and uh, 28 I think, for Aria, under five, to do the adventure pack, which was three rides on the toboggan and three rides on the fly, um, whatever it's called, flying thing, <laughs> the flying fox, no, I don't know what it's called. Um, and there's a playground up here, there's a restaurant, cafe thing that's super expensive. Um, and then there's little hikes and stuff you can do, but we are pooped, so we are heading back down. Sorry, the flowers, the hay fever is actually at me today. Um, we're heading back down and going to check out the town a little bit and, I don't know, so, see what else we get up to. Come up our day we have driven back to Interlaken and checked out Bren's, Brienne's Lake. It is absolutely stunningly blue. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a lake so blue before. Um, gosh, and I so wish we could have stayed in this area. It was just so, so expensive. It was going to be like a cheap house. It was going to be like not very good. It's going to be close to like $4,000 for four nights. Like. It's just crazy. So, yeah, I really wish we could have stayed here. Um, it's definitely, again, <laughs> a come back to again list and spend more time here. Um, hopefully it can get like a cheaper rate somehow or somewhere or different, I don't know, maybe different um, time of year or something. There's a festival going on, so maybe that's caused like the prices being high for this particular time. I don't know. But it's definitely like we've been here before. In winter and have now been in spring and I want to come back again so uh, yeah there's so much you can do here in this area into like in Grindelwald, uh, Lata Um there's a gondola up and a cliff walk and we were gonna do that but we didn't have time for everything um, and the majority rules 
voted for the tobogganing and stuff, but it was going to cost about the same to do both. So that's what we did instead. Um, and there's plenty of waterfalls and hikes and things as well. Um, there's castles. There's there's so much. I had so much flagged because we were going to try and come and stay here and spend like four or so days here um, to do. But yeah, just couldn't justify that price for that accommodation. So um, I'll keep them flagged for next time. And um, yeah, if you do make it to Switzerland and this area of Switzerland, um, there's plenty to do. Say good morning, Aria. Good morning. <laughs> On another glorious day here in Switzerland. Um, so we have packed up from our beautiful chalet that we were in. Of course, we did a week there and our time was up. And we are actually heading um, to France. <laughs> so we do have a change of plans. We were going to go towards Las Bramen and all that. But I said earlier that it was way too expensive. So we're... Yeah, I saw. Sorry, beautiful blue lake down there. We drove past earlier. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it was too expensive. So we did. So we decided to go just cross into the French border and head there for the next four or five nights um, and do a bit of the French Alps in the area. I hopefully get some better value for money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, the place we stayed at was absolutely amazing and stunning and loved it, but it was very expensive. So. Um, yeah, we just did, that was the end of Switzerland, kind of our one stay in Switzerland. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so we're heading that way and we have stopped along the way for a, um, a hike. Um, because we've got, we had to check out at 10 and can't check in until 4. So, we've got a few hours to fill during the day and there was a nice hike um, along the way. So that's what we're doing. Um, it's called Gorges du Dali, or Daily. Um, that's my, obviously, Australian take on the <laughs> French... Swiss name, um, but yeah, it was a bit hard to find. We had to actually go to the car, there's a special designated car park near the village. So if you put in hotel balance, like if you search that name and then look again in the area of hotel balance, if you take, go to there, there's a, you'll see a car park. And there's signs that say park, car, uh, car park for gorgeous do Delhi. Um, so that's where you park and then you gotta walk through the village, pretty much to the upper side and then through to a path. And then you finally found it. Finally find it. Yeah, it was a bit confusing, but that's okay. We made it. The others, the Caderos didn't make it. They ended up elsewhere. So uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny because they were going to the gorge itself written on maps. So I had luckily found a bit of information on the website that was listed on Google to how to find it. So yeah, anywho, I'll stop yakking and we'll get this hike underway. Yeah. 
made it to the gorge. And a bit of a hard yak of walk, but we made it. And then uh, we decided we wanted to go down and follow the other track down. So we get to like a V. So a V goes up and then to the stairs and down, crosses over. So I think you can keep going up and along and like walk more of the cliff on the other side. That's what we could see from the drone, but we're not really sure where it goes. Whereas we think this one loops back to where we started. So we're going to go this one. But um, if you've got more time and more energy, then we could explore the longer one or see where it goes. <laughs> um, that's very cool. Very, very cool. Happy? Yeah, it's cool. Did you take any photos? I did take one. I don't know if it'll work or not. It's not the oh. best composition. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's a very difficult composition place. Especially with the sun on one. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. See how it goes. See how it goes. Yeah, pretty much taking steps along the edge of the cliff down. There are zigzag steps down, and uh, yeah, we're right next to the cliff, <laughs> which is rather interesting, but it's a beautiful view. Another glorious, glorious day. This is glacier water. It tastes like it. it tastes like melted ice. It's so funny how it tastes different. <laughs> that is so refreshing. Cold, like it's straight out of the fridge. <laughs> Alrighty, we made it back. So, just to make it clear, we came along the path from the village. It was partly paved. <coughs> Then we got to this hut, and there's three signs, one there, one over there, and one down there. Went up to the waterfall, all the way to the gorge, through the forest, up to the top of the gorge, had a look on the other side, came back down, went down the path, around on the other side of the cliff, through down through all of that, and then followed that along over the bridge, uh, or the waterfall again, so we did two bridge crossings, and then followed that through. There is another walk down further that you can take off the track to, um, to a glacier and stuff further down but that was too hard for us and we just came back to this hut um i think it's taken us about an hour and a half casually slowly today to get to this point back so probably another 20 minutes back to the, the car from here so it's about a two hour round trip i think at our slow pace taking photos and flying drones and all these sorts of things but it's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful huh. walk back through the forest now into France and uh, the border patrol was actually there and yeah. like asked us questions and stuff um, first time so we've crossed from Germany to Austria and Austria back to Germany Germany to Switzerland with no not even like a 
really an official border or anything. Switzerland crossing into Switzerland. No, crossing into Switzerland there was, but there was no like stopping or anything. So not part of the EU, so it was like a few more different rules. Goods and taxes are different, and yeah, there's there's no, there's no pure no borders at all between the other European countries. Yeah, except for Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we got stopped. They just asked us where we were coming from, where we were going, how long for. And then they're like, yeah, have a good day. Well, we came from Switzerland and we're going into France. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. As you saw, we just drove into France, which means Switzerland is over. Seven nights total. We really, really wanted to spend longer, but the budget just doesn't allow for that. Which brings me into what I'm going to share with you now, which is all of our statistics and summary uh, information about our week in Switzerland. It's always the thing people are interested in most, is, like mostly is how much it cost um, and our favorites. So we'll get into it. So we did our seven nights in the one location. So we did do a week long stay, which did mean that we could get the week long Airbnb discount. Um, and it put us in a location with pretty much what we wanted to do and see uh, in the area, plus a close, um, close enough for the day trip to Lauterbrunnen, as you saw. Our favorite attractions, there's just two of them because we only did the week, Trummelbush Waterfall, I hope I'm saying that right, and the Glacier 3000. They're both um, completely unique experiences for us as Australians, glacial experiences that just don't really happen in a lot of places in the world. Our least favorite attraction. This one I don't really include very often, but I thought I'd throw it in there for you this week. Um, but there was none, not a single thing we that we did in our week in Switzerland, we didn't enjoy it. everything from the paid expensive Glacier 3000 right through to the free waterfall um, and gorge hikes. Um, not a single thing is something that we wouldn't recommend doing or wouldn't do again. So we have some budget tips for you because as I said, Switzerland is expensive. So how we did it as cheap as possible, but still we were over our budget and I'll go through the exact costings very soon, but we did things to try and keep it as cheap as possible. So even though with our budget, um, we still went over budget, we still did things to keep it even that low. <laughs> so these these tips will help you, hopefully, um, if you're able to extend your time in Switzerland or even, you know, make keep it, keep it to a budget for you guys. So the first thing is, I did mention already that we did the one week, week long stay uh, in, the, in the location and we did share that with our friends. So we got to have a nice chalet um, it was three bedroom, so it was one for us, one for our, the parents of our friends, and all the kids were in like bunks. There was four bunks in one room, so we could share the cost. There was two bathrooms as well, so each family had a bathroom, uh, one kitchen, one lounge room, one dining area. Um, we could share the cost with that family to keep the price down. We also did a full week of grocery shopping in Germany before we arrived in Switzerland. We left Germany and arrived in Switzerland that day. Uh, we we planned out a week's worth of meals as much as possible. We um, discussed that with our friends, what they would eat, things like that, and we um, we bought what we could as much as possible. Keeping in mind, a few fresh bits and pieces um, had to be grabbed along the way, but even you know a full three litre milk lasted us the week, so it was great. That did actually keep the cost down. Believe it or not, the groceries are more expensive in Switzerland. We also had a kitchen, which meant we could do our groceries and cook for ourselves rather than try eating out all the time. We could make lunches, pack them and take them with us, that kind of thing, um, which did keep the budget down. Again, we had our own car and, a, and it was a long-term car rental that we were doing, which had a cheap daily rate. It meant we didn't have to um, pay for public transport. We could go, we could stay out that little bit from the main tourist area and drive ourselves there. Um, which mean, meant we didn't have to stay in the main area at a higher price um, and we could go and take ourselves to the free water, waterfall hikes and things like that um, as well, which worked out really good. The, I already mentioned as well earlier the Lauter Brown and Grindelwald um, Interlaken area. It is one of the main tourist areas. Um, the accommodation there is just crazy prices. However, they do have a lot of the grocery stores there, the bigger stores than where we were as well. Um, we only had a small like, co-op, but they had an Aldi and things like that. So we did actually drop in when we were in that area and we picked up a couple of extra things because it was a little bit cheaper at the Aldi there and the Lidl than it was in the little um, town that we were in. To keep with the budget thing, we didn't have to do the Glacier 3000, which was our most expensive attraction. Um, 
and that would have helped with the budget for sure. A hundred percent would have helped. Uh, however, it was such an awesome experience for us um, that we don't regret it at all. But if you are definitely needing to stick to a certain budget, that would be one that you could definitely leave off, leave off doing. Um, and then you'd probably come in a bit close to your budget maybe. Um, but it also was amazing. So it's up to you. Uh, just another random note is that if you didn't already know the uh, Switzerland uses the Swiss franc as their currency. It is the exact same value as the euro, so there is no kind of difference in terms of exchange rates um, making a take, taking part or making a play in that um, value for money. Alrighty, let's do the costs. I'll do the breakdown and then the total cost for you. All right. The cost of accommodation for seven nights in Switzerland was $1,176. <clears throat> so remember, we did share the chalet with our friends. Um, if we were to book a two-bedroom on our own, it would have been much more expensive than that. Food. So we, including the groceries that we did in Germany before we arrived, uh, the eating out at the bits and top up, the top up bits, the bakery runs for Daniel. Uh, the food cost for the seven days was eight hundred and thirty-five dollars. Okay, so transport costs. So this is the car hire cost per day for those seven days, the fuel that we used, parking, any other transport that we did. I don't think we did anything else. We were going to go on a train and then we changed. It didn't happen. So I think that was all of it. Uh, it was $319. Attractions. This one's a big one because of that Glacier 3000. <laughs> um, so all of our attractions that were paid attractions came to $1,038 for that week. That was probably our most expensive attractions so far. <laughs> now we have an other category, so that includes our insurances, our e-sims, um, I don't know, everything else. This is the everything else that we spend money on. If we have to buy, you know, a new hat, <laughs> you know, we haven't had to, but if we have to buy any of those extras kind of thing, it doesn't, it goes into this category. So it's all still accounted for and it goes into here. Uh, that was $164. So all of those categories added together should cover all of our costs. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, so the total cost for one week in Switzerland for our two adults and one child was $3,626. And we did it cheap. <laughs> That's a lot for a week, uh, which is $518 a day. And again, we did that as cheap as we could, minus Glacier 3000 as a splurge. Um, but... Yeah, it's and when we did all the smart things, fueled up fuel before we went, we got the groceries before we went, we shared the accommodation, we literally didn't eat out anything but a couple of bakery stops. Um, yeah, it shows you how expensive Switzerland is. Anyway, if I've missed anything, if you have any other questions, um, let me know in the comments. Happy to help, happy to answer them. Uh, leave me a comment on the video as well, it always helps. Um, let me know what you think of it. We absolutely love Switzerland. We really want to go back. We really want to try and find a way to do it that stays within our budget um, because we obviously can't do over budget too often. Um, but there's, and there's so much more to Switzerland than we've um, explored. Uh, and I know, I do know we'll be back one day. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next episode when we get to France. Coming up next week, join us on an exhilarating journey through the stunning French Alps. Our adventure begins in the charming town of Chamonix. We hop aboard the iconic red cog train, our destination, the Mer de Glace, France's largest glacier, where we also descend into a man-made ice cave. Next, we venture to an alpine lake, encounter local fauna and stunning views, and finally spend a delightful day in picturesque Annecy. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to join us. We will see you soon.